This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks, and welcome back to another ClickFunnels Quick Tip. And today we're going to take a look at how you can do a hover effect on a button, or realistically you could use this for any kind of element inside of ClickFunnels 2.0. Right now, natively, there is no hover effect. There are animations for buttons, but no actual hover effects at this time. And so I just built out a simple one here, and i got to click on the screen first, get it to work. And so here we go. We hover over it, and it's pretty standard for a button is you have it enlarged in size and then you also put a shadow around it just like that. Well, it's not really as simple as it should be in 2.0 because normally you come in, you say here's the element, let's identify it. When we hover over it, do these things. Well, it's like I said, it's not that simple because of... You know, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure what it is inside of ClickFunnels, but I have not been able to pinpoint it, so I had to build kind of a little bit of a workaround. So let's just take a look right here. We're looking at this element, and down here at the bottom, I have the code showing on the screen. So here is the outer part of the element right here, and I gave that part of the element an ID of hover button, and I'll show you how I did that in a second. And then um, we had to apply some CSS to the button itself, but then we also had to apply some CSS to the uh, to the a part of the a, a part of the element, the anchor tag part of the button, and this is normally where you see over here. If we look at the CSS for this, this is where in the a part of it right there, you normally get your stuff like your border radius, you get your border styles, your padding, you get your box shadow that we're going to show around the outside. Actually, it starts off with a slight box shadow. We're going to make it a lot bigger, and then we have our background colors and border colors and all that kind of stuff. All that gets put at this level right here. And normally when you do a hover, you just say that, okay, when somebody hovers over the A part of it, the anchor tag part of it, that it will do this. Well, in the case with ClickFunnels here, we have to say is when you hover over the entirety of the button, we need to do stuff, but we only want to do majority of that stuff to the A part on the inside of it in the first place. So I'll show you how this all has to get set up. So I got another little button up here at the top, and so we're just going to open this one up, and uh, in this case here, let's just go in here to the code real quick, and I'll show you how I set up the ID. So for this button down here, I just came over here to the right, and I put in hover hover button, and in this case here, let's just say it's hover button 2 for the blue button up there on the top, and then we can update this and then if we were to apply any CSS to that button at the top we would then copy this and let's just come over here and I would then paste it in we got our hover button too and then you put in your uh, curly brackets right there and you put your CSS declarations in between it right below it right there so what we want to do now is uh, we want to just kind of inspect this button up here and look at why is it that we're having problems with this button so let's say I want to come in here and I want to say I want to put a box shadow on that button up there so we're just gonna say box shadow of zero pixels, zero pixels, because we want it right behind it, centered right behind it. And then we're going to say 25 pixels, and we're going to make that black. And now you see as I click out of here, oops, let's just click out of here and close that, you're going to see it has a black all the way around the entirety of a box there that you don't even see on the screen because you don't know it's there. And the reason why is because that element is taking up the entire width of that row that it's inside of. So let's go back in here and let's take a look at this. If we go to, let's, we need to go up to the button above that, open this up. So here, as you see, as I highlight over this, that whole area is blue. If we come down here to this button down here, it's not that way anymore. And the reason why is this one up here at the top, this one was set as display of block. This one down here was set as display of inline block. And what that means is that all the extra padding on the outside of it, all that extra space on the outside of it, when you go inline block, all that extra space goes away. And that's what we need to do in order to be able to hover on this thing properly. Because with this one up here at the top, if I were to come in from the side, let's say, and I come in from here, as soon as I got to that very edge right there, it would see that as I'm hovering over that element, 
and it would blow it up in size. Whereas with the bottom one down here, as I come in from the side, I have to get right onto it before it blows up. So I'm right on the anchor tag part, the A part of the button, for it to blow up. Whereas out here, it would blow up as soon as I got into the button at all. So let me show you what I had to do to set that up. So let's just go in here. We're going to open up our code. And we're not going to need this code up here at the top. So we can just take that back out. So down here, I called this one here, hover button, as you saw. And what I said here is I just told you that I made this as inline block, display of inline block. So it took off all that extra space on either side of it, gave us just the element. The problem is when you do that, and let me just kill this code right here. What it does is because there's nothing keeping it away from the sides of the row that it's in, it just goes sliding to the left-hand side, which is normal for most elements on a page like this. It's going to always go to the left. It's going to float to the left. And so what we have to do is we have to tell this then, once we turn it into inline block and make it skinnier, we have to tell it to go back to the middle of the screen. And so that's exactly what we're doing here. We're saying we're giving it a position of relative, which means we want it to be positioned relative to where it was originally put, which basically means leave it where it is unless we change something about where it is. And then we say we want to go left of 50%. So again, if we take off this left to 50%, it's going to go all the way over like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to say now, we want to move this over left 50%, which basically means we want to move it to the middle of the screen. Well, the problem is it's going to move this edge, this left-hand edge to the middle of the screen right here. So that's the first thing we got to do is we got to move it over there. So now that left edge is in the middle of the screen. Well, we don't want that because then it's off center and it looks stupid. So we have to do another line of CSS known as a transform. And there's a lot of different transform values you can put in here. But in this case here, we're saying translate minus 50%, which is going to take it from where it is and move it back over to the left 50% of the width of the element itself. So not 50% of the width of the screen or anything else, it's 50% of that button. So it's going to move it back, which by doing that will center it right in the middle of the page. So there we go, boom, it's in the middle of the page. And then the next thing we need to do here is we are going to want to hover on the A part of this element, not the entirety of the element. You see, we don't have that up here where we got the entire element, just the A part of the element. We want to say, okay, when we hover on the A, because again, as I said up here, if we hovered on the entire element, I, I could actuate it by being way over here on the side. We want to just do it when we land on the A itself. So we do it here, hover button space A, meaning A is a child element of the hover button, and we're going to say we need a transition of 50 or 0.5 seconds. And what that is in there for is if we did not do this, let me just turn it back off here. Uh, if we did not do that, and I come in here, we hover out, see, hover it out in half a second, but as I pull away, it's just going to slap back real fast. Boom, see that? So it comes out slow, boom. And of course, you don't want that. So what we do is we just put a transition on the element itself in its normal state so that when it goes to hover and then comes back to its normal state, it'll do that in half a second in that transition right there. Then the last thing we're going to say, and this is where kind of the little tricky bit comes in, and in the past, before CSS3, um, maybe even 2, I don't know, um, you would have had to write this with JavaScript because what this line is saying right here is that when we hover over the button itself, not the A part of the button, when we hover over the button, but remember, because we shorten this button up by doing the inline block, essentially the entirety of the button is now the A part as well. But because of some sort of thing in, in ClickFunnels, and I'm not sure what it is, I can't make it hover over the A, so we have to hover over its parent element, the entirety of the button, and then we say, Okay, once we hover over the entirety of that button, we want to do something to the A part of the button. And that's what this says right here. Now, like I said, if you were writing this in JavaScript, you'd have to write a function and it would have to say, okay, hover button on hover 
function, and then the function would be to apply the CSS to it, and then uh, when you unhovered, you'd have to undo it as well. And so it'd be, yeah, you know, it could be five, six lines of JavaScript code, or you could just do it right here in CSS. And so we're saying when we hover over the button, we want to do certain things to the A part of this element, and we want to transform and scale it 1.1. So 110%. So as we hover over this, it scales it up in size by 10%. So we can, let's just come in here and let's just put in like 0 0.1 and we do that and then boom, makes it like really small. So you can do it that either way. So we will just put this back to 1.1. And then also we're going to put a box shadow around just like we did up at the top earlier. Boom, puts that box shadow around there. And again, the box shadow and the size all grow over that half a second time period on the transition, which again you see here. And you could do things like ease in and ease out, and I never even bother with that. It's, it's not really necessary because you got only half a second that this thing is moving. So that is it. We uh, just uh, The biggest thing here is we had to shrink that button down so we were targeting exactly what we wanted to, and then when you hover on the button, we want to do some stuff to the anchor text within it. So that is it for today's quick tip. If you have any questions, just let me know.